What's up, Shift Shapers? Welcome to the Shaping the Shift podcast, a pod about change and uncertainty for dreamers, creatives, and folks who just want to get free. I'm your favorite ride and thrive, Thea Monier, and I am so happy that you're here. Let's get going. Because what is the purpose in you being a butterfly if you spend your entire life inside of a cocoon? Hey, Shift Shapers, before we jump into this really juicy, delicious episode, I just want to make you aware of one of our latest and greatest offerings yet. Think about all the things we've ever offered you and how we could take it to the next level, and that would be Hold Us Sacred Retreats. Our first retreats will be at the Red Sea, and we plan on doing retreats all throughout the year. So if you're remotely interested in knowing what it's like to travel with us and our efforts to decolonize joy and pleasure and creativity in marginalized bodies all around the world, then please go ahead to our website, click on our logo for our Hold Us Sacred Retreats, and fill out the interest form. We have ongoing orientations and conversations about what it means to change the world. And as always, we are so grateful every time you share, like, follow, subscribe on all major podcast channels, also on our YouTube channel. Anything you can do to amplify our work, we are ever so grateful. Thank you so much and enjoy the episode. Hey, Shift Shapers. Welcome to this warm winter solstice series drop of Shaping the Shift. We are always so grateful, so happy, so moved that you continue to listen and to share, to like, to subscribe, to be a part of our text community. And now many of you are choosing to trust us as we take this work to the other side of the world with Hold Us Sacred Retreats. There's just been so much. I want to say that I loved (laughs) engaging with you all around the love series. I really enjoyed dropping a whole series like that. The thinking behind it, I think I shared a little bit of this before, was that I just kind of wanted to sit in things a little bit longer. And our previous seasons, we were were babies and we're just getting into this podcasting thing and like needed to sit back a moment and really sit with the power of having this platform and this space, the responsibility that comes with that, the character we have to maintain, the way we have to make sure that we are asking ourselves the question, does this bring me joy, that we are in alignment, and mainly wanting to make sure we have a sustainable way to keep this podcast evolving. And so last love series, which was so intimate, and it's still just one of the most tender, lovely things to listen to. And if you haven't listened, now is a great time to go back and do that. I really enjoyed it. I loved moving seasonally. I loved welcoming fall with you that way. I loved watching you all move through the episodes, return to the episodes. It just felt good. And instead of it being like a week to week thing, I was able to kind of sit back with you and sit in the experience with you by just letting them all out at one time, Netflix style. So with that being said, we've done something similarly with this series, which we've titled Born Wild, Born Free. And this series comes at winter which I am in the process of, I think this is not my first time. Every now and then I have to kind of renegotiate or re-energize my relationship with winter. I am a summer baby. I am a Leo, so my planet is the sun. (laughs) I have ancestors of Caribbean descent, so I love the warmth. I love the sun. I love the spring. And I can embrace fall. I love the change, the oyaness of it all. Winter and I, we are on again, off again. (laughs) It does all the things that I know are a necessary part of my growth and evolution, but that I am naturally the most resistant to. It's a time of enclosing. I do not like to be enclosed. It doesn't mean I don't like to be alone or introspective, but I even, I have my office outside because I don't like to be enclosed. (laughs) 
it's colder, as I mentioned. The days are shorter, so there's less sun. And my ability to just get up and do is really impacted, partly by some of those things I've named. I don't have as much, or I mean, I never have control when it comes to the garden, but I definitely have very little when it comes to this time of year, very little influence, I should say. Everything has to run its course, and it's a time of deep surrender, which that doesn't necessarily trouble me, but it's surrender with this feeling of restriction. And so maybe I'm giving myself a little bit of the medicine that I need during this winter months and during this winter time by naming this series Born Wild and Born Free. But I'm sitting with and I'm in a relationship with the question, what do the losses of winter make room for? And how does that restricting allow me to find freedom in deeper unknown places than I couldn't imagine? I think about letters from a Birmingham jail, Martin Luther King's writings. And I think about a lot of transformations that have happened for people in enclosed times or spaces. Mandela, a lot of our freedom fighters who spent time in prison, Malcolm X's conversion to Islam in prison. Even biblically, we look at Joseph, who was the dreamer, the interpreter of dreams, who was sold by his brothers, finding his destiny in that enclosed space. And there's truth to this. There's truth to this. Is I've written about this. I've had meditations about this. I've had visions about this. This point of breaking, this point of death that is required for rebirth, which is exactly what winter does, right? Is remind us of that. It's this point of reaching a limit or what is a perceived limitation and defying it through rebirth and discovering more of our godhood. It's what Tara Brock calls, how do we reach our edge and then soften? So in thinking about born wild and born free, first thinking about what comes to mind when we think of the word wild, and we tend to think very externalized, we tend to think very radical or unauthorized, untamed, raw, unfiltered, powerful, dangerous, strength, alone is another word that comes to mind when I think about the wildness sometimes, to be in the wild. It's associated with our freedom in many ways, yet it's something that is so demonized. It directly impacts our sense of belonging, the question of can we be our wildest, most authentic self and still be in relationship with others? This is a... Balancing act. How do we be our most authentic, wild self and be in a relationship with others? And that is where the winter of it comes in the reflection on a wild thing being an internal edge that we meet, an internal threshold that we cross within ourselves and see our own God spark. That it doesn't even have to be public or visible to the world. It will be soon enough through our work, but maybe winter provides the perfect cocoon for that sort of inner death and rebirth. Doesn't mean we'll like it, doesn't mean it'll feel good, but the question is more so, are we willing to take that journey? Are we willing to see if there are other wild ones? at that edge when we get there, or what unknown, multifaceted, infinite possibilities are there. And it's okay to be afraid of that. It's okay to be afraid even while on the journey, as long as each foot keeps going in front of the other, as long as we keep moving forward. For me, I really have been on this journey What does it mean to be black, to be wild, and to be loved? Can I be all those things? Hence the love series, and hence now the born wild and born free. It's a question I've been 
asking myself for a little over a year and teasing out in my life and exploring in my partnership and my mothering and my friendships and my work. I mean, so far, and I think I knew at the beginning of the journey, the answer was yes. The question was, would I be willing to do what I had to do to go on that journey? Would I be willing to die multiple times if necessary for these rebirths to continue to happen? And now winter provides the perfect cold, distraction-free space (laughs) for us to focus on this kind of work. And so I brought in people that I absolutely adore to share their insights on sovereignty and stuff, like Akilah S. Richards, how our sovereignty and our wildness impact our nervous system with Jessica Schaefer. And then just a dear, sweet conversation between me and my favorite Trini, (laughs) Renee Marie, as we explore time and eternity and wildness and deliciousness and taste and flavor. As always, these are our musings. These are our thoughts. Mingle them with your own. Mingle them with your friends and your families and your ancestors and your spirit guides. Mingle them with whoever you want. Make your own adventure. We're really just happy and honored to share it with you. Renee Marie and I went on so long that half of it will be here available through the podcast series and the other half will be in our Patreon because there was just so much (laughs) and we wanted to continue the conversation and get even more personal with it. So it felt like the best place to nestle that was in our Patreon. You'll also notice this season, the way we've dropped them is there are excerpts from my book, To Be Black, To Be Wild, To Be Loved, that I am currently working on, but decided to say, fuck it, let's use it now. And there will be poems in between or pieces or writings or musings in between each episode for you to sit with and enjoy but also feel and allow yourself to have this embodied experience with. And so what I did for each guest is I chose one to read to them before each episode. And then that's the energy that we're coming off of as we go into the episodes. So I I got to have some fun. I got to do something different and new and explore some different types of my, different sides of my creative self and recording for this particular season. As for you, beloved, you've been on this journey with me now since May of 2020. Mm, We're approaching the close of this 2022. And my prayer for you is that you don't look over the year and see what wasn't, but see everything that was and give yourself credit for every small, tiny choice that supported your most authentic, wild, happy, joy-centered, free self. Those count. We do such big work. The work to be wild in a domesticated country, in a controlling space, in a capitalist society. The choice to do things our way, to trust our gut is monumental. I can't even put it into words. It's huge. The ways in which you have honored me by allowing me to hold that space for you for the past two years, a little over two years now, has changed me as well. You are part of a community and a world that was just a thought in my mind. And every day that you show up, and you listen, and you share, and you write us about it, or you talk to us about it, or you post about it, anything, anything, it all means so, so much. You are a part of why I know I can be Black and wild and loved. And whether or not we've only met by you listening to my voice, or we met in person, or we know each other very well, I deliberately and distinctively love you. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. So I will not stand in your way. 
I will let you dive into these yummy, delicious, wonderful offerings. I hope you enjoy them. And if you do, tell me all about it. Make my day. You can DM us at Shaping the Shift. You can email us at connect at theamonier.com. You can write reviews. That is so helpful when you write reviews and you can give us five stars, but you can also just share with people and talk about it and keep the conversations going and agree and disagree and have counter thoughts and new thoughts and just have a fucking ball. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. And I really hope more than anything that this brings you some peace and some ease and a little bit of wild warmth for your winter season. Until next time, Shift Shapers, I'm going to tell you like my mama always told me. And if you learn to go with the change as opposed to resisting the change, the reward is at the end.